British Museum in London, exhibited in room 52 in the section covering the history of ancient Iran, is a small barrel-shaped clay cylinder inscribed in cuneiform writing. An exact replica is also displayed on the second floor of the United Nations Assembly Building in New York. The original object is one of the most important archaeological finds associated with the empires of the ancient world. An artifact named after and attributed to the exploits of a man known to Iranians as Kuresh i Borzog, or in English, Cyrus the Great. This object is known as the Cyrus Cylinder and it declares the victories of the celebrated king of ancient Persia and founder of the Achaemenid dynasty, Cyrus II, who between 559 and 530 BC ruled over the greatest empire the world had seen. Not only does this object represent one of the most important archaeological treasures of the history of the ancient world, but it stands as an amazing verification that the Bible is the inspired word of Almighty God. The Bible makes specific reference to Cyrus as the conqueror of Babylon and identified him as God's chosen instrument in the liberation of the people of Judah from captivity in Babylon to return to Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple the temple previously destroyed by the Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar. However, the Bible does not merely record what Cyrus accomplished during his lifetime, it actually predicted the major details of his life and accomplishments almost 200 years before he was even born. An amazing demonstration of God's omniscience, his declared foreknowledge, only the true and almighty God can do such things. This presentation provides a summary of the life and exploits of Cyrus and details the events foretold beforehand through the prophet Isaiah concerning God's purpose through Cyrus who was nominated as God's servant well before he was even born. Furthermore, all of this would be accomplished even though Cyrus himself never knew God. This is one of the most dramatic and incredible fulfillments of Bible prophecy. The exact year of the birth of Cyrus the Great is not known with absolute certainty. Some historians have determined that he was born around 600 to 599 BC, whilst others date his birth around 576 to 575 BC. Although a number of legendary accounts of his early life have been made, little verifiable evidence is known of his early years. But we do know that his reign lasted 30 years starting in 559 BC. He built his empire by first conquering the Median Empire, then the Lydian Empire and eventually the Neo-Babylonian Empire. The prophet Daniel's vision of the four beasts, which represent four great gentile empires that would dominate the known world and especially rule over Judah, is recorded in Daniel chapter 7. With a parallel account of the four empires represented in Daniel chapter 2 as the great image of a man being composed of different metals. The first beast of Daniel 7, which was seen in vision as a lion with eagle's wings, represents the Neo-Babylonian Empire under King Nebuchadnezzar II. Having gained independence from the Assyrian Empire in 626 BC, Babylonia started to exert increasing influence and after the fall of Assyria in 612 BC, the Neo-Babylonian Empire emerged to become the first great world empire under the rule of Nabopolassar, the father of Nebuchadnezzar II. This empire came to the height of its power under Nebuchadnezzar, who reigned for a period of 44 years, during which time three main incursions were made into the southern kingdom of Judah, starting in 605 to 604 BC and culminating in the destruction of Jerusalem and Solomon's temple in 586 BC. 
The second beast seen by Daniel was a bear raised on one side and having three ribs in its mouth. The three ribs represent the three major kingdoms Cyrus the Great overthrew to come to the height of his power, namely the Medes, Lydians and Babylonians. Cyrus elevated the Persian section of the dual Medo-Persian Empire to its dominant status, symbolized by the bear being raised on one side. During his reign, Cyrus led an expedition into Central Asia, resulting in major campaigns that were described as having brought into subjection every nation without exception. However, Cyrus did not venture into Egypt as he died in battle fighting the Mesagete along the Sir Darya in December 530 BC. He was succeeded by his son Cambyses II, who managed to add to the empire by conquering Egypt, Nubia and Cyrenaica during his short rule. Isaiah prophesied between 759 and 699 BC. Inspired by the Almighty God of the Bible, he prophesied around 740 BC concerning the future fall of Babylon, which was to find fulfillment around 200 years later in 539 BC under the leadership of Cyrus the Persian. At the time of his prophecy, the Assyrians were in power and Babylon had not yet risen to its position of dominion. We read in Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 1, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. And in verse 5, Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. Thus the Lord God pronounced through his prophet the demise of Babylon, well in advance of its fulfillment. However, the story of how Cyrus was called by God to execute judgment upon Babylon, to act as an instrument of God's predetermined will, has yet many more amazing details declared beforehand by the God of the Bible. We read in Isaiah 44 verses 24 through to 28. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish, that confirmeth the word of his servant, and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah ye shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof, that saith to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up the rivers. That saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure. Even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. The words of Isaiah's prophecies declared specific, predetermined details. Details that included the raising up of the decayed places, the cities of Judah being built, Jerusalem being inhabited, the drying up of the rivers, and God's call to Cyrus to be his shepherd, declaring that he would build Jerusalem, and through him the foundation of the temple would be laid. All of these details are truly amazing, seeing they were spoken at a time when Judah had not yet been invaded by any foreign armies. Jerusalem and the temple had not been destroyed, and Cyrus, king of Persia, had not yet even been born. 